Thanks so much for joining us here on 90s Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Now, this is pretty exciting. For the first time ever, astronomers were able to take a photo of a massive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. NASA released the photo back on May the 12th, and Dr. Kachu Yu, a space scientist with the Denver Museum of Nature and Scientists, uh, Nature and Science, joins us to talk about this uh, amazing discovery and what it might mean for the future and also a bit more on how significant of a discovery this is for astronomy as a whole. So Dr. Yu, thanks so much for taking the time to join us and explain to us how exciting this discovery is. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, before we kind of get into more on this discovery and what exactly it means, for those of us who might only know a little bit about them, perhaps myself included, just exactly what is a black hole? Well, a black hole uh, is basically um, a, sort of like a pinch point in space um, time. Um, it um, happens, um, it's created when um, a huge amount of uh, mass um, falls in um, and, and collapses, um, such as from a dying star. And uh, we have evidence that um, there are uh, black holes all um, throughout our own galaxy. And, um, and, and those are created uh, by massive stars um, that die at the end of their lives and collapse into a black hole. But uh, over the last um, 40 or 50 years or so, astronomers have also realized that um, there are these supermassive black holes that reside at the centers of galaxies. And these black holes um, can range from millions of times um, more massive than our sun to billions of times more massive than our sun. And, um, and there's actually um, some, um, yeah, some confusion as to how they can actually form um, so quickly because we have evidence that um, some of these supermassive black holes got their start very early on um, in, in the history of the universe. And so uh, um, supermassive black holes are um, of um, great interest to astronomers just because um, we don't quite know how they form, um, but um, their presence um, can actually alter um, and change the evolution of, of the galaxies that uh, they are in. So uh, being able to observe supermassive black holes um, is considered you know, to be pretty important um, to a lot of astronomers. Well, you kind of mentioned it there. So I guess from a broad perspective, what is so extra special about this week's discovery? And what I mean by that is how long as well have astronomers been trying to confirm the presence of this black hole and document it? Well, um, we've had a lot of uh, suggestions that um, a lot of hints that um, there's, there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And um, prior to this, what astronomers did um, was to measure and to observe the orbits of stars that are um, in the cent central part of our galaxy. And by looking at their orbits very carefully, they can deduce that some there's something very massive there. And, and so that's why they've known for a long time that there's something um, you know, at least 4 million times the mass of our sun located at the center of our galaxy. And that something is also very dark, meaning it doesn't um, emit um, as much light as you would expect is um, if there was a cluster of um, 4 million you know, solar mass stars in the center, you would know, expect that to be very bright. And in fact, um, two years ago in 2020, two astronomers were given the Nobel Prize in Physics for helping to confirm that it, um, it's very likely that a supermassive black hole um, sits at the center of our galaxy. But it's only um, just now in the last several years that we've um, been able to actually image uh, these black holes. So three years ago in 2019, uh, the same um, collaboration, the Event Horizon Telescope team um, released a picture of the uh, black hole at the center of the galaxy M87. And that was, uh, that made a huge um, splash in the news back then. And, um, and when they took the, um, the observations for that um, black hole, they, they actually also um, made the same observations for, um, for this black hole. But it just took an additional amount of time to process all of that data in order to produce um, this particular picture that we uh, that we're seeing today. Oh, uh, you're uh, muted. And I'm sorry about that. This is all just so stunning to me in a couple of different uh, respects. That this is all really kind of taking place in the last couple of years. Um, is there an idea in terms of how far away this black hole is? This one at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, where 
on the, of course, outer side of the uh, Milky Way galaxy, we're, we're spiraling uh, towards the edge of the galaxy. Um, is there an idea in terms of how far away this black hole is from us here on Earth? Yeah, this black hole is about 26,000 light years across. And uh, to give you um, some context about how far away that is with respect to the galaxy, um, our, uh, Milky Way galaxy is, um, is a spiral galaxy, but it's shaped uh, more or less like a big disk, like a dinner plate or a frisbee. And if you imagine the black hole at the center of that disk, um, our sun orbits about halfway out. And so, um, so our sun is about halfway out from the center of the galaxy. And then, um, and so, so the distance between us and the black hole is about a quarter of the size of our galaxy. So about 26,000 light years. And part of the reason why it um, has been so difficult to observe, um, even with um, other telescopes, um, is because uh, there's just so much um, in the way of, uh, of material that's between us and the black hole, because we're trying to look through a quarter of the galaxy. Um, there are lots of stars to confuse things. There's intervening gas and dust. And so the center of our galaxy is actually very, very difficult to observe. And that's why um, you know, the confirmation of this black hole took so long. It was easier for astronomers to observe external galaxies <laughs> to observe black holes um, residing in galaxies outside of our own than it was to observe um, our, our own black hole. One of my favorite things about talking about astronomy is it makes you feel so small, honestly. You know, um, I've got a flight later on tonight and uh, I don't know, flying a couple thousand miles seems like nothing when we're talking about 26,000 light years away. Um, so it's, it's just stunning to talk about. But from there, I kind of also ask you about the fact that this discovery, obviously very heralded, um, considered to be a very big deal in the astronomical community. Could this give us an idea about other big advances that may take place in the next few years um, in astronomy as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you know one of the important things about this discovery is that it took um, such a big team of people to do it. There were over 300 astronomers and physicists that were involved. Um, they um, used um, telescopes in eight observatories around the world, in both the US and Latin America, um, in Antarctica of all places, in Europe, in South America. And um, what they did was they linked all these telescopes up to create um, basically a giant telescope um, roughly the size of planet Earth. And uh, so um, this is uh, you know, a major um, undertaking and collaboration. And it just um, speaks to the power of being able to collaborate and work internationally with um, other partners because um, you know, the United States by itself wouldn't have been able to do this um, just using the telescopes um, that um, are in the US or in Hawaii. We really needed a, an international collaboration to do this. And, um, and you, you'll see that uh, you know, even for um, major observatories uh, that, um, that have been launched or, or, or are being planned, um, there are always um, a, you know, a primary uh, partner that, um, that funds a lot of it, like the uh, James Webb Space Telescope that just um, launched. That's mostly um, you know, funded by the United States, but you also see lots of international partners as well. And so in science, um, international collaboration is a really important uh, part of making all that su su successful. I just kind of want to follow up on something you just said there. Uh, you said that the telescope it collectively is about the size of planet Earth. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Um, so uh, the the, um, <clears throat> the black hole is so small, or um, what we see of the black hole is so small um, that you know w one analogy that people use is that you know you um, imagine you're trying to image a donut or an orange on the surface of the moon, which is about a quarter of a million miles away. Um, that's how um, small of um, of a projected area that you're trying to see. And, um, and the reason why astronomers build larger and larger telescopes is that the larger the telescope, the smaller the detail that you can see. Well, it turns out that this black hole, because it's, um, it's, it's actually about um, 10 times larger than our sun, um, the, the, the event horizon, uh, but it, because it's located 26,000 light years away, um, you really need a telescope about the size of the Earth to see the detail that we're seeing in, the, uh, in this image. But obviously we can't build a telescope that big, but what you can do is you can have lots of radio telescopes um, scattered across the earth and you can um, collectively combine the information from those different um, radio observatories 
And after you do that, you basically can reconstruct an image that's akin to having a telescope um, about the size of the Earth to give you the, the resolution or the detail that you're seeing. So that um, again speaks to um, just um, you know the the, uh, the the physics and mathematics and just the technical know-how that's um, needed to be able to um, create this image. It's not just you know pointing a telescope um, up into the sky and then seeing a picture that pops out. There's actually a lot of work that's required to reconstruct this image. Gosh, that's also uh, fascinating. I'm, I I must say. Um, is there anything else that we've Miss about this discovery that you want to add about it? Um, yeah, I, I talked about the international collaboration, which I think is you know one of the most um, important things. Um, I guess um, another thing that I could talk about, um, yeah. Um, so uh, so one one um, other really interesting thing um, that I find about this is you know, you know we, we we saw the um, M eighty seven uh, picture um, was released about three years ago, so that was the first picture taken of a supermassive black hole. And it took this long um, to get a picture of our Milky Way supermassive black hole, even though it's a lot closer. Um, but that's also uh, but that's because um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of intervening um, gas and dust. Uh, there's a lot more noise you have to reduce. But uh, because our Milky Way black hole is also about a thousand times smaller than the other black hole, um, <clears throat> gas and, and, and material orbiting. The black hole actually orbits a lot faster, and so um, whereas um, when they were imaging the other black hole, um, partly anything would change as they were imaging. So you know, weeks on end, um, you wouldn't see much change. But um, the, the the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy was changing on the hour of uh, minutes or hours. Um, it was changing up on a much faster time scale, and so you know, imagine if you're trying to take a picture of your kid or a pet, and they're, um, they refuse to hold still. And this is um, sort of what they had to deal with with this black hole. And uh, they had to come up with a lot of new tricks in order to uh, to get the image that um, that they can get. Wow, I didn't, again, would never have thought about the amount of different components and work that went into uh, that single image. But uh, thank you so much for uh, taking a few minutes of your time here, Dr. Kachu Yu, for um, giving us again a bit more of your expertise and insight about this amazing discovery and this amazing photo and everything that it took to get to that point. So thank you so much for your time here today. Thank you very much, Chris. Again, this, this is uh, Dr. Kachu Yu, a space scientist with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Thanks again for joining us here on 90s Plus.